helped lock him up. However, this can't be verified. Senna's guilt extended far past encouragement, and police had footage of her chaining various children on more than one occasion and remained chained to his bed. What was further sickening was the fact that Cushman and Senna had set up security cameras to film this sort of to later save it in their phones. Hitting children, I mean, f you should be able to redirect them. You should be able to talk to them. You should be able to teach them that hitting is not good. There were dogs and stuff, and one of the dog bowls was by, and he scooched the, the dog bowl over to him and ate it, and he got punished for that too. Because he ate the dog's rice. Because he ate the dog's rice. So the dog got a better treatment than he did? Yes, yes. It was a very evil, pure evil. I agree. When you, when you harm children in this way, it's just pure evil. If we were having something for dinner, it got thrown in a blender with her drink, her everything, and that's what she was expected to eat. She made the kids get in there and eat it. I don't remember if it was the boy or the youngest girl, but they were going to pee their pants. They had to go to the bathroom so bad. And they didn't get out of the pool all the way in time, which is gross in its own, right? Like You just peed in a pool of pudding much of that pudding mind you now it has dirt in it it has leaves in it it has pee in it matthew said that they were also frequently humiliated as a form of discipline it looked like something you'd see in a world war ii pow camp well she was probably nine or ten at the time maybe you know calling children names humiliating them and making them feel unsafe that's, what, that's the reason why the, the child protection statutes are, have the teeth that they do. Ugh, I just hate anything that has to do with hurting kids. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self-snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, your host, your host of this amazing show, supported by and created by the content genius you know as Michael Rivers. I'm coming to you sporting my, well, we have a little bit of a luck uh, Irish going on here today. I've got my Irish cufflinks, i got my green Irish tie given to me by a fair Irish lass, and you know who you are. So, and I am your board certified criminal defense lawyer. And what that means is, you know, I've got a certain level of experience. I've been doing this 26 years I have uh, had so many trials, cross-examined so many experts. This is what I do. In fact, on Monday, I've got two trials that are set. So this is what I do. I don't just hold your hand and, be, and write you a passport to prison. That's not what I do. So we are reacting today to uh, uh, explore with us. And the, act, and the name of the video is uh, Hero Cops Save Kids Trapped in a House of Horrors. You know, we, I don't, we don't really get that many cases like this. Um, I haven't seen this as a cold reaction. Our content genius thought it would be a good idea. Um, so here is, we're just going to get into it, but before we get into this, our sponsor, eForms.com, is just an incredible sponsor of our channel, so go to eForms.com if you need any kind of, kind of legal form, whether it's, you know, a bill of sale, power of attorney, anything you need for your grandma who lives in your basement, or for you for that matter, so you go to eForms.com, you fill out whatever form you need, and it protects you because if you sign it and the other party signs it, guess what? You've got an enforceable agreement, and you can stay out of court that way. Or if you have to go to court, you're protected, and, and you could probably win. So eForms.com, make sure you do it right, do it legal, and, uh, and make sure that your grandma's well taken care of, like mine. So eForms.com, that's our sponsor. Thank you. So here we go. Uh, Hero Cop saves kids trapped in a house of horror. He made attention. He made attention. So random. Oh, wow. Horrible, man. Why are you protecting this woman? All right, right away. Crimes against kids is the worst kind of case you can have. <coughs> now, me being a private criminal defense lawyer, I have more of a choice over the kinds of cases that I take. But if you're a public defender and you get assigned a case like this, you don't have a fucking choice. And the problem that you have is, you know, I mean, granted they're in, you know, being held against their will, but they've got teddy bears. I'm kidding. But you, you have a situation where you probably have an 
absolute reprobate, just a complete creep as a client. And it's tough to, to represent people like that because, number one, nothing's ever their fault. Number two, they have real unrealistic expectations most of the time. And number three, they're just creepy. And so when you have, uh, you know, what, what did he say? They uh, had a dungeon. Now they're going through the dungeon. Just awful. Why are you protecting this one? That is the devil right there. You don't believe him. This horrible person. Did you? When state police accompanied investigators from child services to a home in Texaco, New Mexico on July 22nd, 2022, they had no idea they were walking into a house of horrors. It's a dungeon, bro. Say please! So, if you are the person living there and the person responsible, the last person you want to see come to your door is what? Is the police, right? And let's talk about what they, the cops need to do. They get a report, and the first thing that they need to do is get a search warrant. They need to get a search warrant because if they just... Well, if they just bust in, you know, odds are that, you know, without a warrant, unless they have an exception to the search warrant requirement, it's the Fourth Amendment, <clears throat> anything they find would get suppressed as fruit of the poisonous tree. And what I mean by that is anytime a cop acquires evidence in violation of any of your constitutional rights, they can't use that evidence. It gets suppressed. For example, you're driving down the street, and there's absolutely no reason to pull you over, but they pull you over anyway, and they make something up, and it's not on the video or whatever. And let's say you had a dead body in the back of that car, and they and but they just stopped you for nothing. Well, guess what? That dead body gets suppressed as fruit of the poisonous tree. They can't break the law to protect the public. Just as simple as that. So, And that's an extreme example, of course. But one of the first things that they do is you got to get a warrant. The woman who answered the door was Jamie Cushman. This isn't her first run-in with the CYFD, but this visit would eventually launch an investigation into one of the most shocking cases in all of New Mexico. Most of the following footage has never been seen before. Sort of helps that she's already in orange. <laughs> Cushman alleged that the person who reported her was someone she had a falling out with. For now, though, the police kept focused on inspecting the property. Okay. So because of the condition this time, usually it's a whole lot better than this, so I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, um, I, like I said, I was in the hospital, so... Okay. Is Laura not seeing her? No. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take some pictures. Um... So, and since it's going backwards, then we'll take some pictures of, and then we'll just... But this is not, this is real. I mean, this is just, it's just... So this looks like uh, social services coming to pay her a visit. This, but it's, it's, we're going to take pictures of the whole house. Um, you know, you're responsible for other children. Well, I know, but I, I didn't feel like this was super messy. Yeah. I mean, she just, she was actually cleaning it last night, so... Now... I am not the neatest guy on the planet. Actually, I am pretty neat. That would drive me fucking crazy. That, you know, when anything's cluttered or, you know, hoarding or anything like that, I can't even watch those shows because it's just so ridiculous. Yeah. And she's the only one that's sleeping in here? Yeah, this is her room. Well, you take pictures. I'm going to just check on other kids. Okay. okay. Do you want me to go with her? Yeah. I'm going to check on my other kids that are in a dungeon in uh, the ground. Yeah, she's wanting to go okay. Hey, can you stay with her? Yeah. I'll stay with her. The kitchen was extremely messy, with dirty dishes rendering the space nearly unusable. The bathrooms were an even worse mess, with mold growing on the tile around the shower and bathtub. Rumor has it she's available. Portable toilets had been placed around the residence to compensate though it appeared that none had been emptied recently as they were completely filled with waste. I mean, 
When you are taking care of a child, you have to do what? Keep them clean, keep them fed, keep them educated, keep them safe. When you see shit like this, literally shit like this, what the fuck are you doing? They were completely filled with waste. Needless to say, the house didn't pass inspection. But the evidence which would take the case from simply concerning to truly horrific was yet to be found. Cushman had been sharing this house not only with her own children, but her girlfriend, also named Jamie, her girlfriend's kids, and a 16-year-old girl who was not related. There was also another couple staying with them. But before investigators could get too far, Cushman attempted to pull a fast one with the authorities. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Like in, like in reference to like what, like what's the standing? Like she doesn't like me. Okay, is there a reason why? Yeah, because she came out here and she took an infant from me and we fought her in court. Okay, did you get that infant back? No. no. It was on my, it wasn't my infant. Okay, okay. Yeah. And she does not like me. So I, the one I'm walking around with? Yeah. Okay. And so I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to get a fair, because oh, I, I don't. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm torching the shit out of people, but I'm not going to really get a fair shake. Give me a break. I mean, in all honesty, you don't have to... I don't see anything wrong with my home. Mm -hmm. Do you? I mean, there's stuff here and there, but, I mean, no one's home is perfect. But nothing to cause some fire up from all of you, think. It's safe to say that the investigators were, in fact, alarmed. They would seek to learn more about the baby later, but currently needed to focus on the situation at the house and the state of the children living there. After sending Cushman back inside the house, the investigators finally catch up with 14-year-old CK to ask her what had been going on. I really need you to be honest with me. I need you to talk to me about these things, okay? Because other people are telling us. So whether you just tell us everything or not, um, we're still going to be involved. And, and you're the older one you to, be, to tell us the truth. You can look in his eyes this time and tell that he's scared. Yes, yes. And he's never been afraid of us. But this wasn't the only surprise investigators were in for. As a So one of the things that people like this do is they threaten and intimidate a witness. Well, the children, right? And they do it with beating. And you could see from early on in, in the beginning of the video how their freedom of movement is, is uh, restricted how that she had an alarm in case they get out of bed. I mean, um, and I guarantee you there's, there's beatings if you disobey. And there's probably just beatings anyway. New party arrived on the scene while they were chatting with the kids. That's just Laura. Yeah. I thought she didn't look She did it. She does it. Okay. She lives in Clovis. What Laura was suddenly doing on the scene was anyone's guess. The specifics of why weren't needed for investigators to know that there was more going on than met the eye. This time. You don't look okay scared. this time. I'm nervous though. It's okay. You don't have to be nervous. Remember last time? It was okay. I'm never going to be mean to you. You're not going to be in trouble for anything we talk about. Okay? You okay? Okay. And it's okay. She already told me. So we already know about it. People have already told us. You're not going to get in trouble. And one of the things that young children don't know is that this shit ain't normal. You know, I mean, they just know what's in front of them. And even though they're being abused, they have an affinity for their abuser, you know, because they believe that's home, that's safe, even though it's not safe. So you see this all the time. You don't have to talk about it. You're okay. You're okay. Is that good for him? The horrifying details of what the children revealed would be learned later. For now, after speaking with the children, the officer and the child services investigator had to make a decision on how to move forward. What they came up with did not go over well, with Cushman or her girlfriend Jamie Senna, who had rushed home from work when she heard the police were there. Based on the report we got. That's a red flag. 
I mean, why the fuck would you go there? If you were her, it'd stay away. This is an interrogation tactic. By stating that the kids have told them everything this time, she makes it clear that she already knows what's going on. As this so that is a common tactic in interviewing uh, forensically or, you know, not forensically, but in cop interviews. Now, this is, this is Child Protective Services, but they're training. They know there's more going on. You got a child that's afraid to talk to them. You know that they're intimidated. And so, you know, look, we already know. The, the kids told us. So why don't you just come clean and just show us what they're talking about? And we, when they say that, you know, she doesn't have to say anything to the cops. But it seems to me that there's enough to get the kids out of the home just with even, even without the torture chamber. This puts pressure on Cushman and Senna to say something that matches what the kids have said. What's most interesting here is that Cushman doesn't make any denials and doesn't ask what the kids have said. Based on the evidence gathered, the police returned a short time later with a search warrant for the Cushman property. How are you guys doing? Which one's Senna? Which one's Cushman? All right, I'm Agent Villarreal. I don't know if you guys remember me from last time. Yes, sir. This is Sergeant Fernandez from the State Police. Um, we do have a search warrant. You guys just have your cell phones. Those are okay. also being seized, okay? Uh huh. But it's part, it's of, part it. of the search warrant. It's on the search warrant. Can you turn it off? Can I tell something? One of the things that the abusers like this do is they like to record you know, their abuse because they get off on it. You. Yeah. There's, there's going to be a videos on that? That's not my concern. Okay. <laughs> that is not my concern. I know, ju trust me, the person who's going to be extracting the data is me. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I, that is not a part of our investigation. Whether there is or not, we don't care. I don't care. That is not a concern. That's not why we're here. That's not the data that we need. And there's probably videos of the children on there. Okay. So we're only going to extract data that we need. That's it. And we'll give them back to you. Both phones were seized, along with the required passcodes, as the search warrant dictated. It's an interesting question of what would have happened if they'd refused to hand over their passcodes. That you don't have to do. The court cannot uh, compel you to give information. You can remain silent. I mean, that happened in a case I, I had not long ago. They don't have the code. And you can break into the iPhones, but it, it, it depends upon a lot. And I was told in the last case that I had where we didn't have a code that it was going to take, you know, about a year or, or, or better uh, to try to break it. And they do it with a, a machine trying to, I don't know exactly how it works, but it's, it's very complicated and, and we wound up never getting the data off that phone. And there was even an FBI case where, there, where, uh, a ter where they seized a terrorist phone and Apple wouldn't open the phone for them. It's all proprietary. Though the warrant technically required them to hand over this information, it cannot actually force them to comply. However, refusing could result in them being found in contempt of court. In theory, by disobeying the warrant, the court could put them in jail right then and there until they... Not true. The court cannot compel you to give any information against yourself. Can't compel you to speak. You have the right to the Fifth Amendment. I mean, they're doing this for the purpose of litigation, for the purpose of a criminal charge. So there is jeopardy that attaches, and if jeopardy attaches, you have a Fifth Amendment right not to say a damn thing. They produced the passcode. With their phones in the hands of the police, the full scope of the horror would soon be revealed. And it was more deplorable than anyone could have expected, despite Cushman's apparently jovial attitude. Do you guys have any questions for me or anything? No, sir. Y'all are just doing your job. Sometimes people have that laughter, but it's nervous laughter. You know, it, it kind of looks like she's, hey, look, I don't have nothing to hide. But I guarantee you that's nervous laughter that's going on there because she knows the jig is just about to be up. The police, however, did have a few more questions for Cushman. Is it 357? Yeah. It's, it's the one I got certified. Gotcha. <laughs> I, I wish I had known that before that because, man, I was not prepared for that kickback. Gotcha. Yeah. Thumb? Well, yeah, and, and uh, because I wasn't wearing my earplug right, oh, yeah. the noise, I had, my ears rang for like a week. Yep. So we'll just call you guys down there so you guys can pick them up. Yeah. You know what? We'll probably even just bring them to you if you're here. <laughs> you can call my phone, but it's going to have my phone. <laughs> just bring them here. Small talk complete and the warrant served. The police took their leave, thanking Cushman for being so cooperative.
As the police comb through Cushman and Sinna's phones, they uncover the unthinkable horrors that took place in that house and immediately ask Jamie Sinna to come by the station to answer a few questions. What she ended up revealing was enough to shock even the most seasoned detectives. The following footage has been analyzed by a qualified team, including a licensed professional counselor, a licensed clinical psychologist, a licensed attorney, a former detective, a licensed polygraph examiner, and a former hostage negotiation commander and instructor. Like I told him the phone would just want to get some follow up and kind of be a status and stuff like that. Um, first and foremost, you are here voluntarily. Yes. Okay. And then you said you have an attorney. Mm -hmm. Do you still want to speak with us with your own attorney? It's fine. So, you know, Miranda, we talk about Miranda on here all the time. Miranda is, you know, you have the right to an attorney, it, 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 that whole Miranda warning. If you're there voluntarily and you're not in custody, you don't have the right to Miranda, just so you know. Okay. The officers read Senna her Miranda rights, though she wasn't under arrest. Little did the officers know Senna was hiding more than one shocking secret, and she wasn't the only one listening in on this conversation. How's everything been going since? I've just been working. Been working? I moved out of the house. You moved out? Yes, I moved out. You live there anymore? Nope. You still in a relationship with Jamie? Nope. You guys split up? Yes. What was the reason for that? Did you say? I lost my kids. I have been broke. In the past, Senna I've seen that so many times where people lose their kids to Child Protective Services because of their own either neglect or abuse. And it just kills me because children are such a gift. And there's so many people that can't have children that probably should have children. And then there's so many people that have children that should not have children, like these people had also been in contact with CYFD due to conflicts with her older stepdaughter. This, combined with the horrors uncovered in Cushman's house, resulted in Senna losing custody of her children. The police also took this opportunity to ask what she knew of Cushman's children. Senna explained that RK and CK were Cushman's sister's biological children, but Cushman had taken custody soon after they were born. A.B. wasn't related to Cushman and had been placed with her by CYFD years ago when Cushman lived in Texas. How old was he when you guys got him? Um, Jamie got him when he was like three, I think. Three? Yeah. And he's 11 now? Mm -hmm. He's been with you a while. With and her, yes. With her? Yes. I've only been living with Jamie for since like the end of March. Like officially living in there and moved in since like March. Then this year? Mm -hmm. I haven't really been there that long. In an exclusive interview with Iwu, a victim of Jamie Cushman named Jamie McDaniel shared there was some confusion on how A.B. came to be in Cushman's custody. So how she was able to bring another child into the home? No idea. But Texas was like, hey, this kid needs help. Take him. She didn't go through the formal CPS. It was a phone call. Hey, I'm getting taken to jail. Will you come get my kid? Cushman said, yep, be right there. CPS, let her leave with them. That was the end of it. Sweetest kid. He was loving. Oh, my gosh. He wanted to be held. He wanted to be cuddled. Um, and, of course, Cushman always wanted a boy. So, at first, this was like answer to her prayers. He got everything he wanted. He got his own room. We bought so many clothes and toys for this kid. Very, very quickly, the problems became too much for her. He was defiant. He wouldn't potty train correctly. He um, wanted to eat all the time. So when he got to this house where she... Boy, can you imagine a child wanting to eat all the time? Fucking a, the, the audacity of a child to get hungry. Jesus Christ. She was willing to give him anything and everything he wanted. Of course he's going to eat all the time. He's a kid. He's not going to stop and think, oh, well, maybe this is too much. So he would eat to the point where he made himself sick. Well, Cushman was like, nope, that's not good. So all of a sudden he was being punished. Nobody checked on him. Not one time, not one time from the time he got to our home in Farwell till when he got picked up. Not one time did someone come to visit him and be like, hey, you're not even supposed to be in this state. Hey, you're not even supposed to be with this woman. That was never brought up. Tell me how a whole state 
lost this child. Worse, according to McDaniel, Cushman had already been reported to CPS at the time she got custody of A.B. This was massively worrying, especially considering what police knew about how A.B. had been treated. Senna might have been a recent addition to the house, but police suspected that she could be hiding more than one dark secret. They would uncover exactly what it was during their interview. I was prominent for the food. Everyone had this, all the kids had the same amount of yeah. food. Every dinner, every lunch, every meal, we had every single food group. Okay. Like, I mean, they had, you know those little trays you get at Walmart? Mm -hmm. You got the three yes. you know, sections. Yeah. yeah. All of those were always full. Okay. How was the discipline situation? Yeah, it was always redirecting. It's not like, like I told the lawyer, that it's redirect, redirect, over and over. She sounds like Shangri-La. You got three hots and a cot. You're dealing with children in a very positive, pro-social way. And then when they get out of the bed or wet the bed, an alarm goes off and they get a beating. Over and over and over. Time out to their room. And if it ended up screaming and kicking and fighting, then they get a the spanking, but not hard, not excessive, not like... Now, in most states, you can strike your child. You can spank as long as it's reasonable, basically. I, I don't believe in spanking. My dad used to beat the fuck out of me, and all it did was make me hide my shit better. You know, I didn't, and it, and it made me resentful. So hitting never works. Oh my gosh, you know. Who would do a discipline? Jamie. Would you do a discipline? No. What kind of discipline would you do? Timeouts. Timeouts. And everyone's so what's... Every once in a while, yes, I did. Like, my son, if he started kicking and screaming, I would pat him on the and then turn Though Senna portrayed what she thought was a rather favorable image of the children at home, the appalling reality was a far cry from it. This truth surfaced during the search conducted by the police at the Cushman residence. State police, we have a search warrant. New Mexico State Police, come to the door. State police, search warrant. New Mexico State Police, we have a search warrant. Come to the door. When their announcements went unanswered, police entered the residence anyway. Despite the officer's suspicions, no one was found in the residence. Just as before, however, emaciated dogs were running free all over the property, and police had to take extra care to make sure that none of them were aggressive. One of the first things the police probably noticed was how different the inside of the house appeared compared to the previous visit. State police, search warrant! <laughs> Clear? Clear? So essentially what you're seeing is, um, you know, they clean things up and it just looks different from the time before. John, did you clear that spot? Yeah, yeah. Anybody clear over here? Yeah, give me the... State police, search warrant! Dirty dishes were no longer overflowing from the sink. The toilets were empty and the water was back on. A former friend of the Cushman family, however, was able to offer a theory on the matter. Matthew came forward to talk to the police once he heard on the news that Cushman was being investigated. He'd reported Cushman to CYFD multiple times, starting around 2014, eight years earlier than what was happening now. Now, normally, I'm not a fan of snitches. But when it comes to the welfare of children, I absolutely am. And so if you see something, you fucking say something. And it's uncomfortable. You might even see something in a mall. You know, I might, you know, I, I remember one time I saw this kid being beaten by his mother. And... I stepped in and, and I, I tried to talk to her calmly, but she just said, get out of my fucking business. And it's like, and the kid was just like, no, no, don't call the cops, don't call the cops. You know, the kid was just petrified, petrified of his mother, petrified of the situation. Children are vulnerable. They need to be protected. And if you are somebody that knows of abuse, you have to, a duty to that child 
to uh, to report the abuse and get him out of that situation. You just do. But none of his efforts ever led to a formal investigation. His theory about why nothing ever happened was highly concerning. They call CPS with CPS. They call them. They get a heads up somehow. And uh, Jimmy and Jamie and Laura get a heads up somehow from CPS through whoever. I don't know if it's a law enforcement that lets them know or... How do you know that? Because uh, I, the time I called, the kids would clean up everything and, and um, she would get them all dressed up in matching outfits. Unfortunately, state police would discover that this was only one example of how local law enforcement had failed to capture evidence of the children's suffering until it was too late. <laughs> So random. They were a guarantee they woke up to something. So if you're handcuffed to the bed on the top bunk and you roll out of bed, you know, I mean, people roll out of bed all the fucking time. But I mean, how, how do you handcuff a child? Have you given us a 48? Will you hold that up if I don't get your picture? Oh, yeah, you're good. After finding the chains next to the beds, the investigators might have thought they'd already discovered the worst of the suffering. But this was just the beginning, and they never could have guessed just how inhumane some of the children's treatment had been. Police found more chains and padlocks, secreted away in a drawer beside Cushman and Senna's bed. It seemed that with every room they searched, more disturbing evidence was unearthed. See the other one? Oh, yeah. The one right here. And then... See me right here? Yeah. All right, let's go. I just can't imagine abusing children this way. I just... It just absolutely... And, you know, and the thing is, as a criminal defense lawyer, you see this kind of stuff all the time. You see... And varying degrees of it, of course, but... And you just never stop seeing unique situations that are either depraved or cruel or just awful like this. When investigators eventually confronted Senna with these sickening details, she revealed a surprise of her own. The chains, the what was, alarms. What was that for? Just because um, Jamie has said that he has gotten out to the house and broke into neighbors' houses. So it's a water they put on him, but it, the pen pulls out real quick, and they they have free range of the entire house. Typically, children. They have free range, <laughs> really, with padlocks and chains. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. Children with such severe behavioral problems have been mistreated especially if they're under 12 years of age. I don't know how to explain it, but there's the black box, mm -hmm. okay? And then the chain goes on their ankle, mm -hmm. and it, the little pen goes into the black box. The second that pen pops out, the alarm set screams. Mm -hmm. But they have free range of everything. They're not- well, see, what if you were of them? As far as I know. I know when they came in January, they saw them. They never said anything about it. Were they them. aware of how they were being used? I don't know. Like, I honestly, I don't know all of that. Though Senna didn't yet seem to realize it, she just implicated herself in the awful happenings inside the house. While executing the search warrant, police had found the so-called screamers that Senna was talking about. Oh. That's the one. Did you videotape it? Yeah, we did. Can you see it? There's a little thing that comes up. Too. So they won't leave? Do they know when they leave? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's horrible, man. That's not right for children or any person for that matter. <laughs>
the police found more chains and screamers beside every bed in the room. Back with Senna, the chains weren't the only thing police planned to confront her about. So if CYD would come, because let's be real, that house was not the best, cleanest house ever. No. It was always dirty. This is unsafe. Yeah. And each act of abuse is a count in and of itself, is a felony account. You know, so you strike a child excessively, it's a felony. If you neglect a child, it's a felony. And each day that they can describe something, that's a separate count, which you stack all that shit up together and you're looking at a long time in prison. What's up with that? Huh? And every time CYP showed up, you guys would start picking it up, correct? Is she, yeah, I was. Who was she called to give her time to pick up the house? I don't know. In addition to more evidence of the callous disregard and treatment of the children, the police also found a strange area attached to the laundry room at the Cushman residence. Oh, what? it just leads back. It just leads back here. Ah! What? I'm good. Nothing relevant was found in this strange area, but it was a different story entirely when they searched the backyard. It's behind. Yeah, there's an AC on this side. This small structure would become very important to the case soon enough. Stay clear. Those who tried to report this terrible mistreatment of the children and living conditions met with the short end of the stick. In an exclusive interview with Iwu, Matthew shared more about his frustration with law enforcement after he alleged that they told Cushman he was the one who reported her. So I got to go talk to Doug Bowman, city cop. And uh, I go over and I'm like, what, what is this? Well, you got a restraining order against you um, from Jamie Cushman and them. Blah, 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 says you harass them, whatever. And um, I was like, Doug, the kids are getting chained to a bed. I said, your cop messed up. No, no, their story checks out. What Matthew didn't know is that the chains were only one aspect of what was going on. The officer in question also asked Matthew to provide photo or video proof of his accusations, which just wasn't feasible thanks to the iron grip Cushman kept on everyone in the house. If I was taking pictures of Flash at night, she would have lit me up and it had been over with, and she'd have a way to cover it up. Doug, I said, is this going to be the one time that the kids slipped through the cracks? He said, well, I guess so. Matthew was no longer welcome on Cushman's property after the police allegedly told her about his involvement. I mean, the, the cops in Clovis wouldn't believe me. They said they treated me like I was a criminal. Like I did something, they actually threatened me with uh, having a false report on somebody. Sadly, this was only one example of the frustrating experiences witnesses. I need you to pause a little, a but little I, tiny bit. So when you have, a, you know, this is one of the most common complaints about child protective services and about law enforcement. When they see a thing like this and they don't do anything. They just got a, served a restraining order because evidently he's harassing them. You can't be you can't be harassing somebody by calling the police on them um, if there's a legitimate reason. If you call over and over and over again, yeah, that I guess that that would work. But but here there's just so much evidence of abuse and neglect. You know, I mean, look at that young boy. I mean, he just looks like he's emaciated. Experiences witnesses had with local law enforcement.
In an exclusive interview with Iwu, Alicia Brand, a former friend, roommate, and partner of Cushman, shared more on the subject. I made, between CPS and the Texaco police, it had to be like 75 calls. It had to. I did it anonymously for a while until I didn't care anymore. Hi, I'm calling again. Hi, I'm calling again. And maybe I'd get a different person on the line and they'd be like, no, we're really going to, I'm going to put good notes in this. Like the notes from last time don't really look like that. And I'd be like, what do you mean? And I'd tell them. Almost sounds like she's got somebody on the ends inside kind of uh, running interference. From the beginning. And then I'd tell them currently and I'd tell them and it just, I'd spend hours on the line over and over and over trying to get someone else out there i'd be like please don't send the local sheriff please don't send you know the same people that have been going out there you need someone bigger the state police were determined to handle things differently they tracked down sheriff doug bowman and brought him in for an interview of his own over the course of my career over here 14 years i've been over there i can't tell you exactly how many times but it's been a handful of times that i've been over there with cyfd mm -hmm. i found it unusual that every time we went the accusations that were made, there was no evidence or foundation to believe what they were doing was wrong. Was the house dirty and not the best that it could be? Yeah, but I've been in a lot of houses like that in my career that doesn't justify taking kids out of there. Oh, we literally took the chains off the wall. Mm -hmm. We have chains and evidence on every single wall where the bed's at. Danny, I don't doubt you guys. One you bed. never saw a chain hung up next to the bed in the kitchen? No, the sir. Time at all? There was never a chain. Back in the interrogation room, Senna was growing more and more distressed. Tell me about the dungeon outside. What dungeon? The, 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 the storage shit outside the house. The one in the front yard right there? In the back. In the back. In the back yard? Yes, what the snake and the cats, what's that used for? Police first learned about the dungeon when they asked about Cushman's uncle James, who sometimes lived on the back part of the property. Why he built it and what he utilized it for remains unknown. Police were pretty sure that they found the dungeon in question while carrying out the search warrant on the property. Do you think that's like what they say the, the dungeon is? No, you're probably right. That's what I'm thinking because there's an, there's an air conditioner. Yeah. Right. Were your baton fit? Got it. Yeah, I don't want to bet on the baton. There you go. Oh, there's a, there's a bed, bro. There's a dungeon, bro. Photograph it. Yeah. Is that, a, is that a freaking arrow? There's a toilet in here. Got a SIM card. SIM card? Is there a camera? In addition to a crossbow, camera, chains, and an abundance of cats, the investigators also found another critical piece of evidence that would be significant later. Senna, however, had a different explanation for the shed dungeon altogether. Andy and Rob stay there. Who? Andy and Rob stay there. Who's Andy and Rob? The, the two people with the baby? Where's the baby now? They're in Oklahoma, as far as I know, and they got taken away. Did you ever put the kids in there? No, no. But the kids never got in there. I know that one hundred percent. No, 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 we didn't. I, who me? No. This is the danger of doing an interview. I mean, with the cops, because you don't know what they know, and all of a sudden, she—they're pulling this stuff out of their ass, and and it's just horrible, deplorable. Um, Police needed to find out how much Jamie Senna was aware of what was happening to the children and what her exact role was in the cycle of mistreatment that so clearly pervaded Cushman's inner circle. They clearly suspected that she wasn't telling them the whole truth, though the reason why was more complex than they could have predicted. Whose idea was it to do that? When you moved in, was it already happening? It was already there. So you had no plan installing those chains? Yeah. Did you ever... Tie them in their, to their ankles? I, Did you I, personally tie them? Once, I think. To who? You tied it once? But I've never did it tight or nothing. Like I, I was like, 
I was so scared. To Would you change your like that? Yeah. Oh, for just one. She's a grown ass adult. What is she afraid of? Well, for just one. You would never do that? Yeah. Obviously, police had to question this, especially after what they'd heard from witnesses. Alicia admitted that Cushman tried to pressure her to discipline the children when she first moved in. In the beginning, I just noticed that there were excessive whoopings. These kids would be spanked, dragged to where they were being spanked, picked up by the ear and moved and being spanked. There was one time where she was like, if they're not where they're supposed to be, I grab them by the ear and I move them. I expect you to do that. So I, I didn't. One day I told her what happened. So she hit me. She punched me in the chest. She what said I should do? never undermine her parenting, um, that she can discipline her children how she wishes. Jamie McDaniel had a similarly bleak history with Cushman, which began when she was only 15. One day uh, she had pushed me and I had hit the wall and I had like bounced off of it. And of course, like I'm going to catch myself because I think I'm falling. And she thought I was coming at her for pushing me. She knocked me in my face over the love seat. She then flipped the love seat over on top of me, made Melanson herself, all the kids sit on top of this love seat so I could not move. Children are supposed to be uh, safe. You know, you know, you shouldn't argue in front of your children. You shouldn't beat your children. There's nothing you can't accomplish with a, a fist that you, that you can with words. You know, I mean... And usually the beatings are out of um, ignorance and lack of self-control. I'm claustrophobic to a degree. I have panic attacks. I have anxiety attacks at this point. Um, I, I had a, such a bad anxiety attack under there. I pissed my britches. I threw up. And then I was made to clean it up when they finally decided that I was allowed to come out from underneath the love seat. Um, I, I had to clean that up myself. McDaniel's story only became darker from there. If Cushman was capable of behaving like this, police had to wonder what else her children had been subjected to. Even with all of this in mind, there were still stomach-churning details to be uncovered regarding the children. As it turns out, the children weren't only punished physically. Matthew said that they were also frequently humiliated as a form of discipline. It looked like something you'd see in a World War II POW camp. Well, she was probably 9 or 10 at the time, maybe. You know, calling children names, humiliating them, and making them feel unsafe, that's, what, that's the reason why the, the child protection statutes are, have the teeth that they do. Ugh, I just hate anything that has to do with hurting kids. Like her, wear just her underwear, no shirt, no bottom and stuff, you know, around me just to embarrass her. You know, and I said, honey, don't worry about it. This poor child was standing in the corner for days, days at a time. She started making her do exercises as punishment. It was do a wall squat for 30 minutes. No one can do a wall squat for 30 minutes. I am sorry. I don't care who you are. That is not an easy task. State police found a way to confirm at least some of what they'd been told while executing the search warrant, and it was worse than they ever could have imagined. There's going to be a camera as soon as you walk in on the wall. That's the chain. The beds were here. It got moved. In addition to taking all the chains, locks, and screamers they could find, the police also collected a camera mounted on the wall in the first children's bedroom. The footage retrieved from this camera, which was also downloaded to Cushman and Senna's phones, would ultimately reveal the entire sickening truth of what took place in the house and who the perpetrators were. And like I said, we... So one of the things that I, <clears throat> that I preach about on this channel, remember these things? These things? They're a digital footprint. And they record pretty much everything you're doing. They record where you are. Um, if you take videos, you know, those are almost always on here. Photographs certainly are. Even if you think you deleted something, it's still going to be on there. So be careful what you post or what you put on your phone. We extracted data from both y'all's phones. We've extracted data from the video cameras. Mm -hmm. And 
some of the videos are not good. Like, not good. Okay. Okay. Um, this is cool. Let me show you some photos. Okay. I just, we extracted over 1,400 videos. Oh. My guess is that some of these things are going to be fucking sexual. And if that's the case, then we've got manufacturing of child pornography. And federally speaking, you're fucked if you uh, manufacture child pornography. And the, the guidelines are through the roof, as they should be. Throw away the key. That's just some. That's just some. That's not everything. Okay. okay. This is uh, James Bond. You can see here, who's that? The kids? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's that? Um, I know the picture is a little small. Yeah, okay. Can I get right there? Yeah. Well, I guess that's either. Okay. You see what they're eating? So right here on this one, bowl of spaghetti, right? Mm -hmm. How do you feed a dog? You put them outside in a bowl. Here's your food, right? Yeah. Put the bowl of food in the bathtub, naked, and they're eating with her. It wasn't even a bowl. It wasn't even a bowl. Was she the food thrown yeah. inside the bathtub? So that's the ass bathtub. Know. As she, well, she just told me you that, was, that, right? that was a fun thing they did. They like, oh, was, they filled the bathtub with spaghetti because they saw it on their video or YouTube yeah. or something. What sick person does that? I, did, I didn't know that. She said it was fun. I thought you said you never saw this. I've never seen the picture. She told me. She told you about it. She told me about it. And I was like, well, that sounds like a fun thing. I mean, you see people doing it. You I think mean, that's fun? Like, I, I'm thinking not a bathtub, okay? I'm thinking like one of those big up era pools. And, and we know how clean her fucking bathtub is. So, okay, here, kid, here's your fucking spaghetti. I mean, so disgusting. And the kids get to play around. Like, you know. She like sounds like fun. People with the jello or whatever. I'm thinking fun. The way she described it, I, I'm thinking not a bathtub, okay? I'm thinking like one of those big up era pools and the kids get to play around. Like, you know, you see people with the jello or whatever. I'm thinking fun. The way she described it to me sounded fun. Sounded fun, huh? <laughs> Throwing spaghetti in a bathtub. That's not the worst of it, I'm guessing. You know, like a slip inside of spaghetti, like that's what I'm picturing. I didn't know that. What would you do if you saw your daughter take like that? I would lose it. As it turned out, the spaghetti pictures weren't the first time the bathtub had been misused as a feeding trough. And she had dumped cottage cheese in there. It had been there probably for days because it was growing mold. Right. And she was allowing them to eat it. Unfortunately, this was just one of many incidents involving food. She got this, like, the blue kitty pools, like the plastic ones. Mm -hmm. She filled it with pudding. Uh, we made, it was like 10 gallons of milk and so many boxes of pudding and sprinkles and whipped cream. And she made this pool of pudding. She made the kids get in there and eat it. I don't remember if it was the boy or the youngest girl, but they were going to pee their pants. They had to go to the bathroom so bad. And they didn't get out of the pool all the way in time. Which is gross in its own, right? Like, you just peed in a pool of pudding. And so the oldest girl jumped out through a fit because she was sitting in a puddle of pee, a pudding. Like, of course, you're going to react to that. Um, so she jumps out. Well, Cushman gets mad. And those two kids are made to eat so much of that pudding. Mind you, now it has dirt in it. It has leaves in it. It has pee in it. Um, these kids have been getting out and in, and they have toys in there, and they've made buckets, and it's this disgusting mess. It's starting to smell. It's warm outside. It's been sitting outside for hours at this point. She makes them start eating it <clears throat> until they're both so sick they can't. Things up. That is just pure and simple abuse. Just absolute felony level abuse they really messed up when the youngest one started having accidents um, that's when they started blending the food if we were having something for dinner it got thrown in a blender with her drink her everything and that's what she was expected to eat the first time they had put like stuff that's not necessarily too gross together you know some fruit and like a piece of bread 
and you know she didn't love the texture but she ate it it she thought it was funny the kid thought it was funny she's like oh yeah I'm a baby whatever but then because that didn't affect her they're like oh well we're having a hamburger so you're getting a, a blended hamburger and then like oh well what we're having tonight isn't bad enough so I'm going to put in tuna and all like fruit and things that are and just blend them together. Horrifically, Alicia said that even if the concoction was disgusting enough to make CK vomit, she would still be made to eat it. But it didn't end there either. Um, I seen him when he was chained to the fireplace at one time, they had run out of dog food and he couldn't eat that morning or whatever because what he did last night the night before. Um, they made a bunch of rice and just boiled rice and stuff and was feeding his, their dogs and stuff. And one of the dog bowls was by and, and he scooched the, the dog bowl over to him and ate it. He got punished for that too. Because he ate the dog's rice? Because he ate the dog's rice. So the dog got a better treatment than the D did? Yes. Yes. It was a very evil, pure evil. I agree. When you when you harm children in this way, it's just pure evil. And one of the things that happens when you get to court is the particular vulnerability of a victim is, and the egregiousness of your conduct can certainly be grounds for a more stiff sentence. And I guarantee it. Yeah, one hundred percent pure evil. What happened with when started her menstrual cycle? Like when it was starting to start. Jamie had mentioned that she thought, that, and Jamie was like, well, that's gross. We're not doing that. That's what my sister used to do. That's disgusting. Women don't do that. And so she had, I don't know if she put hot sauce on her actual parts or she put hot sauce on her hands. Everything the witnesses shared so far was from before Cinna moved in. At that time, Cushman was still in a relationship with Laura, raising the question of what role she might have played. Police would soon find out. If Laura wasn't as hateful to them when Jamie wasn't around, I would have thought, okay, she's in the same position I was. She's scared of her. She's just doing what she's being told. But when Jamie wasn't around, when Jamie was in the back or whatever, she was no nicer to those kids. In February of 2020, she had the wood paddle, and then she had hit him with his chain. My folks used to hit me with a wooden paddle. I fucking hated it. I just don't think corporal, and I'm nobody gets some backlash on this, but, you know, hitting children, I mean, fuck, you should be able to redirect them. You should be able to talk to them. You should be able to teach them that hitting is not good. Oh, fuck. And I know this is like a parenting lesson. But criminally speaking, the, the more egregious the harm, the more the stiffer the sentence. And the more vulnerable the victim. She hit him with his chain. She hit him with his chain. So she was whooping him with the chain? Um, well, he was, she had him bent down. She was holding his head into the, into the bed and she was hitting him with the chain. Well, she was hitting him with the paddle when he wasn't crying because he'd been hit so many damn times. Mm -hmm. She got mad and she unhooked him from his ankle and she started hitting him with the chain. This horrific scene suggests a level of sadism was likely present. Laura was apparently not satisfied until she heard A.B. cry, which is why she used the chain. Please note that the term sadism is often associated with blacks, but can be associated with individuals who derive gratification from inflicting pain on others. McDaniel also mentioned that Cushman made the paddle herself. Caregivers who spend time planning the different forms of punishment likely have sadistic traits and most likely have antisocial personality disorder. So, I mean, look what's on the wall. Fight through your pain. In other words... I guarantee you they're going to say that it's a motivational thing, but it's it's not. Children who are beaten like this, and, and, and you have this aggravated circumstance by the uh, squalor that they live in and by the um, prolific nature of the abuse. I, I just... You know, and, and it's hard when you have a jury and you have a child case, what does the jury want to do? The jury wants to protect the child. That's not everybody's natural impulse. Oh, I just, this is just making me ill. Orders can often co-occur. Did you ever see Laura? Oh, yeah, Laura didn't want to lock him up, too. I mean, you saw her lock Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 
the purity these people are. Laura, Laura was just involved, but she got James the, the ringleader of all. Do you, you think know? Laura should be in jail too? Oh yes, oh yes, absolutely. Laura should be in jail for, the, for what she did. Perhaps Laura's involvement was why, despite being divorced, Cushman and Laura had been in regular contact since the investigation began. Even after Cushman's arrest later, the two made regular phone calls to discuss the case, including the so-called spaghetti thing. I need to tell you something, too. What? Um, I went through your pictures on your phone. Uh-huh. Like, all your pictures on your phone? Uh-huh. Yeah. Of course, you know. Uh-huh. I was looking for the spaghetti pictures to see what they were. Yeah, and from what, you can't tell, but that the kids are wearing underwear. Yeah, but just know I went through all your pictures, okay? Cushman seemed to be missing the point about all the concerning aspects of those photos. A few days later, Laura fell into the same pattern. And they have blown the spaghetti thing so far out of the water, it's not even funny. Are you serious? What are they saying? Oh, it's just, you can tell that they're, you know, they're eating, the spaghetti was just thrown in the bathtub, and they're eating it with their hands. What about asking the kids? I don't know what they've asked the kids. I don't know what they've talked to them about. I only know bits and pieces of what the kids said in the forensic interview. Police did, in fact, ask the kids. With overwhelming evidence piling up against Cushman, Laura, and Senna, the children were taken to the state police station to meet with a child forensic interviewer. Further depths of the children's suffering were finally about to be brought to light. Brought to light. So when... When children are interviewed by the cops, you know, a lot of times you hear that they have a duty to inform the parents unless the parents are the problem. And the cops typically don't interview children. They have a special person who is trained in interviewing children. They use dolls. They use diagrams. They use uh, drawings. And there's a whole methodology to interviewing a child. There's a whole methodology to cross-examining a child as well. But... What happens is, so that person will come in and testify, or, you know, the witness, the child witness. And then the person will come back, you know, the, the person who did the interview will come back and do two things. Come back and say that the child, you know, um, told X, Y, and Z, basically a prior consistent statement, just say that the child told me this, told me that. Then the um, child would also, um, or the worker would also act as kind of an expert on delayed reporting, the different behaviors that you see in uh, abuse victims, that kind of thing. That day, the next day, her shoot the trampoline. I shot the trampoline? Yeah. Was there anybody on the trampoline? No, only me. You were on the trampoline when she shot at it? How did that make you feel? Like it made me feel scared shitless, like she's going to fucking shoot me. I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's kind of, you know, it almost reminds you of, you know, when the cowboys would shoot on the on the ground and tell you to dance. Notice how A.B. answered, no one, just me, as if he doesn't consider himself a person. Tragically, it seems he's learned through a lifetime of mistreatment that he is unimportant and essentially invisible to the adult caregivers in his life. This is what C.K., one of the older children in the group, had to share. What's in your room? Dress next TV. We do have a chain. Okay. But my mom's been talking about taking it off and stuff. Mm -hmm. They do make me feel safe because they don't want anything to feel like I will never leave this home. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm chained to the, my house. The chain providing C.K. with a sense of security shows how disturbing behavior in the home had been normalized. So what do they call that when you are, um, when you are, have an affinity with your captor? They call that Stockholm Syndrome. You see that all the time, you know, and she's talking as though she has a loving, caring environment, but we know that she doesn't. And... She probably doesn't know any different. ...and even associated with love. How else do you feel when you're changed? Sometimes I do feel sad. I always feel sad because I shouldn't have to be changed. You know, like it's my fault. Stuff like that. 
It appeared the Cushman was gradually beginning to grasp the gravity of her actions, yet Laura remained seemingly detached from the unfolding reality. Jamie, we've been through hell. <laughs> but what if this is the rest of my life? Right then, it's not. We don't think I'm going to prison for the rest of my life, right? Not the rest of your life. <laughs> if Laura was so deeply involved as police were coming to suspect, it was only a matter of time before they determined if Senna had followed in her footsteps. Police would know soon enough once she finally started telling the truth. Why do they have sheets and comforters and pills and he doesn't? I know sometimes he does himself, so then we have to do laundry. So then do the laundry. After reviewing the security footage, however, the police knew that there was a far crueler explanation than a slow laundry process. What happened that day? That's I know that day. Why? That is the day he got out and stole everything in the kitchen. I know that day. And he threw over a bed, right? On the bed, yes. What was that red stuff he threw up? All the food he ate. All the food he ate? He got into all the hot Cheetos, the cereal, the oatmeal, all the crap. I mean, he got into everything. Let me show you something. Okay. Okay. You see that chain? He can't get out. It sounds like A.B. engaged in food hoarding, which can be typical of children who are being underfed, severely neglected, or starved. On the morning of July 6th, just three weeks before the entire incident came to light, it became apparent that A.B. had been sick at some point during the night and was forced to sleep with his own vomit. The camera captured every awful detail, including Senna ignoring the situation. So... One of the things, if you're a co-parent in there, you have a duty to that child. And if you don't act on that duty to protect the child, even if it's from your partner, that's another form of neglect. Why the hell would they record this stuff? Why would they have cameras up? That just astounds me how stupid they are. A few moments later, Cushman entered the room, and things went from bad to worse. Nobody cleans up that floor. You know how he, you know how he cleans it up? You will see right now how he cleans it up. The footage showed Cushman entering the room in a violent fit of rage and smothering A.B.'s face in his own vomit. Later, A.B. had picked out pieces of the vomit from the mattress while he continued to feel sick. And the mother of the year goes to, oh, how ridiculous. Oh, doesn't that just break your heart? So the pattern of abuse is so prolific, it's so sustained, it's so bad um, that a normal guideline sentence probably isn't appropriate for somebody like this. You know, you need to triple the guidelines for her or give her the statutory max. And remain chained to his bed. What was further sickening was the fact that Cushman and Senna had set up security cameras to film this sort of to later save it in their phones. Gee, I guess uh, you're not really being truthful with us, are you? I mean, <clears throat> this is what this is the ultimate self snitching. <laughs> they're catch, they're recording their own abuse, and why are you recording that? You know, I mean, it'd be one thing if you just had a camera that kind of focused on the kids. You know, they're focusing on them so they don't leave, and if they do, then you can figure out where they are. Whatever, but it's quite another to record it save it for posterity, and what? You get off on your own abuse? You cannot sit there and say, oh my God, and tell me you did not know. I did not know. That's how it happened. I did it. Bullshit. Bull fucking shit. What you did know is you didn't know about that chain. Because every, I'm not listening, listen to me. Just, just listen. Everyone has said it and have chained them up. And we're not even done going through the video. Police confronted Senna with just how unacceptable this indignity, along with the violence, was. You can probably guess her response. So you're never around when this happens? No. So you didn't know about all this? He's sleeping throughout the night like that. I find it hard that you didn't know about it. I knew about because he got out and we still Right, but shit. you know what kind of change she's using. He cannot get out of that. It's so, it's such his Senna, watch this. This, 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 this is how we're going to put it into it, okay? It's time for you to start thinking about me. Yeah, I am. And stop thinking about Cushman. Because if you guys are separated and you guys are not together, it's time for you to stop. Start thinking about you and stop thinking about her. As far as because this is, listen, 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 listen. This is 
this is serious. I know. You knew he was not on that chain with a pin. You knew it. Everybody knows because everybody locked him up in that. Did you not know yes or no? It's a simple question. I knew the chain. Right, but you knew come apart unless you unlock it. Pin. Not this one. Yes, it it plugs into no, the No, because we have multiple videos of him. He cannot get out of that unless he has a key. Well, there's messages that we recovered from your phone too. This is something in the lines of, I'm getting tired, he's getting hungry, but that. This is your time right now. This is your time right now. I've never heard of this. But you seem Christian. Text messages like the security footage suggested that Senna was far more than a helpless witness. In one message, Senna wrote to Cushman, quote, LOL is pissing me off, trying to find something to watch. When Cushman asked what... Even if she doesn't do the abuse, and it sounds like we're going to hear that she does, but even if she doesn't, if she does anything to encourage it, aid, advise, counsel, conspire, or otherwise procure, it's, it's aiding and abetting language, basically, you're just as guilty of a crime if you help somebody or, or encourage somebody to commit the crime as if you committed it. So she's on the hook for that. What's going on, Senna replied, His stupid, I'm hungry. I'm going to knock him out. Later, Cushman texted Senna, Ha ha, they're not going to stop until they get me for child. She was right. And now they were after Senna too. How stupid. How absolutely stupid to put that in a text message. Strong effect on her. So strong, in fact, that it led her to reveal something police had not even thought to suspect. Why are you protecting this woman? That is the devil right there. And you know that. Do not protect this woman. Why was she doing that? Did you put her for her to listen? She wanted to listen. She, she knew. Holy fuck. So she's listening to the to the interview. This Jamie Cushman is a bad actor, <laughs> without a doubt. She's going to prison for a long time. You're scared of her. You know what you just did? I've tried to protect my kids as much as possible. You know I've what you just times. did. I've left several times. What did I do? Tampered with evidence. That's right. Cushman was listening in on the interview from the other end of a call. Combined with what Senna and Cushman had just pulled off and the overall evidence against them, officers acquire an arrest warrant for Cushman immediately. Let's go. I cannot believe the audacity of some people. And they, I mean, and they know they're they're talking about the abuse. They're talking about I'm sick of this kid. I'm, you know, and that it's one thing. Now I don't think any abuse of of children is justified. Some people just lose their shit, right, and then start strike out at a child. You know, they just this is systematic. This is systematic, it's knowing, it's intelligent in the sense that they know what the fuck they're doing. And it's not a mistake, and it's, they are not losing their shit, it's systematic. No. Perhaps tellingly, Cushman didn't once ask why she was under arrest. Nor did Laura Melanson, who was driving the car. Cushman was taken to jail. Back in the interrogation room, Senna is finally starting to react, perhaps only now that her own well-being is on the line. You gotta start thinking. You gotta start thinking about you and your kids, or you and her. You think this is gonna help you get no. your kids back? No. Like, I'm telling you right now, we're not even close to being dead. And we're still going through everything. But this alone, just 
off of this. That's crazy. This has got to be one of the worst trauma cases we've had. Top five for sure. It's just our back and relax. Now you want to protect your kids. Well, where were you before? Where were you? When you had the opportunity to protect your kids, you chose not to. Just do that. This is what we're going to need from you, okay? Because I didn't need to be okay. I thought it was just going to be a couple questions. It's not going to be a couple questions, okay? I'm so sorry. Relax, okay? This, what we just presented to you and listening to, is evidence. I did not know you were going to tell me anything like that. I thought you were just going to ask me a couple then questions. Then why don't you take it out when we were going, you know where we were going with this. Why don't you take it out and hang up? I'm sorry. She, will she come and talk to us? I don't know. After what she heard? Probably not. Probably not. No. And guess whose fault was that? This ends up going to court. She, she, Listen I to me. She was never going to come anyways. She told me she was going to come. If this ends up going to court, we gotta think about your kid. We gotta think about kids, right? Right? Would you be willing to testify to everything that you told us? You're supposed to be scared for your kids. I'm terrified for my well, kids. For your kids. I'm trying now. I know it's late, but I'm trying now. I know it's a little late, and I'm so sorry. I never wanted any kid to ever get hurt. This is so messed up. I've had this is. You have no idea. I do. You obviously don't act like you do. You know more than what you're telling us. I don't. I'm mm -hmm. answering everything honestly. Now that she's off the phone, I'm answering everything honestly. And yes, I admit, sometimes I have lost my control. You'll see it in the video. I've gone in there and yelled at my son. Okay, but I don't. They're her kids. I didn't even know where I stand. I barely just moved in there. You know what kind of punishment this is? This it's is bad. It's torture. What is? What did she do? Uh, it's the same thing. Spankings. Chain. Yep. But I know for sure, one hundred percent, her pen is easy access to get out. His is not. I. Do, I. His is not. No, his is not. His is not. Thank his you. Is. Here, Senna finally admits to lie number one indicating that there are probably many more to come. Could you imagine if there was a fire in that house? It would not be safe, I know. I mean, imagine that. Imagine if you have a child that's chained to their bed, and, they, and God forbid there was a fire. I mean, they can't get out. You were burned to death because he couldn't get out because he was tied like a dog in his damn room. And both of you would be charged. For homicide. Cops have kids, you know, and um, you can tell he's getting pretty animated because he's outraged. And like you said, this is one of the worst cases he's ever seen. And it's honestly the, one of the worst cases I've ever seen. It's just this backtrack. Okay? We're going to start all over, okay? Just relax, okay? This is what we're going to need. What's going on in that house? All I want is nothing but the truth. Okay. Don't get shooting. I feel like there's. They don't. It's obvious. It's yeah, obvious. They don't. Jamie has an anger issue. And when they start acting up excessively, she, she gets upset. She says stuff. She obviously, I mean, she does stuff. What have you seen her do? I mean, I've seen her save the kids. I have ah. moved the paddle. They'd suspected the use of a paddle since the initial report alleged that one was used in the house and all but confirmed it during the search warrant. Oh, got it. Hey, I got the paddles. Got the paddles. Oh, there's a snake in there. Oh, I'm good. Whoa. There's a snake. There's a snake. Snake. Hey, can you get a picture? There's paddles. While this discovery was huge in terms of evidence, police knew this wasn't the only form of corporal punishment used in the house. When you when you see a weapon used on a child, that's another aggravating factor. And, you know, we hear people getting paddled all the time. We don't do that today. You, you don't need to do that. You don't need to strike your child. You don't need to 
spank him with a paddle that says bottoms up. I mean, it's just so cruel. And it's the cruel nature of what they're doing. It just defies any kind of common decency. They intended to wring every drop of truth from Senna, who still knew more than she was saying. But the chain is a form of punishment. Yes, and I don't agree with that. And I, I don't agree with that. I'm not comfortable with that. I don't do that to my kids. I don't. It's a form to keep them there to punish them without putting too many freaking bruises on their body. That's what that is. Because they, you guys know CYP goes to that house. And if they have a bunch of bruises on their body, what do you think is going to happen? I've never seen her physically do Yes, you have. I, yes, you have. No, I have Yes, you have. Not excessively, not where it hurt them that bad. Nobody believes that. Nobody fucking believes it. I mean, she says, oh, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Okay, not excessively. What is it excessively? That they die? I mean, come on. Nothing's worse than watching a child suffer. I mean, there's just nothing worse than that. Ah. Footage, Footage extracted from the security, security camera, camera and Cushman and Senna's phones showed firsthand just how barbaric some of the children's punishments were. In the, in the uncensored, uncensored footage, Cushman slaps A.B. in the face three times. times. L.S. was, was dragged, dragged from his bed by an unidentified female. Confronted, confronted with this, Senna was at last about to reveal the extent of this nightmare situation, situation. and what she shared was even more shocking than anything discovered so far. You see that before. I wasn't in the world. It's not a big house. I wasn't in the room. Ah! You, you fucking hear it. You, I guarantee you, it's violent. You've seen that punishment before. You've seen them hit the... You've seen her be... Because you don't... You're scared because you don't want to tell us the truth. You, yeah, because you know if you tell us the truth, what? Then Why are you scared of her? Because I, I hit it and I didn't tell them. So this is your time right now. Tell them okay, the truth. Okay, she, she beats them. Why? Because that, she has anger issues. They don't do something she likes. And she, beats and she takes it away on them? Yes. She takes it out on them? Yes. And you, they're crying, yelling at her. I crying. pull her back. I make her stop. How does she beat them? She's like that. She she hits them and she she spanks them with the paddle. I mean, Your kids too? No. The interviews with the children proved invaluable, as Senna's daughter was willing to tell the truth while her mother was not. And when you do get in trouble and you get hit, who's the one that's hitting you? Both moms. Both moms. What happens when you get in trouble? You get spanked? So you see it's a different interviewer. That's a special forensic interviewer. And they're specially trained to, uh, to interview children. And what you have to be careful from a defense perspective, because that's my perspective, is you know leading the child witness. When they're a little bit older, like 14, 15, it's a little less worrisome. But when they're young, you know, like five, six, seven, um, you, you kind of, you want to watch out for an improper interview technique, but... Do you get spanked? With wood. With wood. Where do they spank you with the wood? I have a bruise right here. Where's that? Well, by your... Right there? Okay. According to her own children, not to mention the camera, Senna's claims of being faultless were nothing but hollow lies. As if that wasn't enough, Senna's text message history once again undercut her declarations of innocence. Senna messaged Cushman, I'm going to hit him, I swear, he just needs to shut the f*** up. In a subsequent message, she wrote, I'm still trying for you because I know it upsets you and it hurts you, and for me because I need to learn to control myself. Cushman messaged her saying, AB is on a rampage. Senna's response was, well, locking up. We can only assume that she meant lock him up. I mean, that display of calculation and how they deal with these children is so aggravating. And, and, and it's something that would definitely be an aggravation for a sentencing. When I say aggravation, I mean make it worse. Make the sentencing worse. Lock him up. However, this can't be verified. Senna's guilt extended far past encouragement, and police had footage of her chaining various children on more than one occasion. 
of course, Senna claimed it was all Cushman's fault. I know she was jumping him out silence. Not like dragging, but she's pushed him out the door to yell at him. But that's all I saw because I was inside with the kids. The person who reported Cushman had recently moved out of her residence. However, they did see what would take place on these walks. And in those those months that you were there, that this is what you observed? Or yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many times did you observe this? I mean, was there something that would happen? Non-stop. Non-stop? Non-stop what? That they would beat them up or they were chained to their bed. Why is she starving? She's not starving. Yes, she is. He's crying saying he's hungry. When you have a child that's malnourished, you can tell they're underweight, um, their features become a certain way, and, uh, and, then, and then they eventually just shut down. Their, their organs start to shut down. And, you know, there's nothing worse than a crying child, crying of hunger. Depriving a child of food is a form of neglect, and, and it's a form of malicious punishment of a child. I, you mean to tell me that, look how tight that is. That is very tight. That I is very tight. Tight. Let's get back to the food. Why is she? Don't not say she's not starving. Because she's starving him because he's complaining he's hungry. He even says he's hungry at times. Why is she starving the kids? I don't know. I know. He gets out and he steals everything. And if his stomach is full, then he doesn't eat. Or like for the rest of the day, because his stomach is so full, don't want to get him sick. Or he'll eat broth or a tortilla. I don't. There's. Or you know, sometimes he eats its own vomit as she shoves his face in it. I mean, they're lucky that none of these kids have died. Although, I think that, that the prison sentence that they're going to get is going to be long enough so that they can never have a child again. They've never gone an entire day without eating anything. Put her on that one. As far as I know, they have never gone an entire day without eating. Yeah, sometimes they have their own piss in a tub full of pudding. Fuck. Notice how Senna initially firmly denies the children ever going hungry and switches to as far as I know later on. It seems she doesn't even believe what she's saying herself. I guess we still were, we that we hungry. Mm -hmm. So if you still or you scream that you're hungry, you missed dinner? Yeah. A complete review of all the security footage revealed that A.B. had been chained without access to food, water, or a bathroom for more than 14 hours straight during the period the footage was recorded. As the other children weren't as consistently restrained, it was impossible to say how frequently, or rather infrequently, they were fed. This was all completely inhumane, but even more shocking was what else Cushman was known to do to her children. What was she put in the cage? No, okay, I've never heard of a cage. I've heard accusations. Bullshit. You live there. You know what's going on. You know... Putting a child in a cage, you know, it, <laughs> is, there, is there no end to their depravity? I've never seen them in cages. McDaniel, who didn't even live at the residence anymore, had seen the children locked away in dog crates. So had members of Cushman's family. Cushman's aunt and her cousin spoke with police and revealed that in 2016, when they'd visited the house, they found C.K. locked in a dog cage on the front porch. It was the middle of winter, and she was only wearing pajamas. Matthew also said he'd seen the children in cages, but Sheriff Bowman insisted otherwise. I never saw a kid in a kennel, because I would have come unhinged. You don't know me, but anybody around here that knows me knows what I would have done. I would hope so. The state police would continue their investigation, but ultimately, Sheriff Bowman was not charged with anything. However, in 2023, he popped up in the news once again, this time in connection with the foster family who had taken in the Cushman children. Mr. Bowman shot their dog on their porch, and the ring camera has it on ring. And the woman got contacted by lawyers saying, hey, do you want us to do something about this? Yes. Their dog, the little dog that don't hurt nobody. I remember that dog. He shot it on their porch, came walk walked up on their yard and shot their own dog and then got in their vehicle. Senna, on the other hand, was facing a host of charges, just like Cushman. You contributed to this. I never wanted to be with her. I tried to leave several times. Then why didn't you leave? I did. She just brought me back. Oh. She, is, she gets in your head. She makes you think stuff. And she made me feel like...
And I came back. There was one time she... She made me feel like shit, so I came back. What the fuck? Honestly, you know, that's just an excuse. And it's not a good one either. It's not a legal excuse, that's for sure. You come back, you're aiding and abetting, and it's, you can tell by the text messages that, that, you know, there's equal culpability here. Just get me back in the house so I can stay. That I didn't leave again. It was like a, a cult of lesbians. These claims could indicate a disturbing pattern in Cushman's alleged behavior. These patterns are similar to those we see in cult leaders, including narcissism, love bombing, targeting vulnerable people such as teens, and stringing people along. Narcissists often lure their victims with excessive affection and attention, making them feel special and adored. They manipulate by idealizing the victim, mirroring their interests, and projecting fantasies onto them fostering a deep but false connection. Once trust is gained, they begin to devalue the victim, causing confusion and insecurity. So you, you see that manipulation and that kind of thing with uh, like battered, um, battered spouse syndrome. And that can be a defense. Uh, and it's not, and in this case, I don't know that it's gonna be a complete defense, but it might be a mitigating factor. During one of their calls, Laura informed Cushman that Senna had broken during interrogation. Are you there? No, I don't have any good news. I have no good news. Jamie told them you did it. Are you kidding me? No. But remember, we're being recorded this whole time, okay? Yeah. But she, she told them that about you being on the phone. She told them that... So this is in jail, so she didn't bail out like she said she was gonna. That when she saw the video, that you, you beat the kids. Um, I was told I could share this with you, but it, it's very long, and I needed you to know that. Am I going to prison for the rest of my life? Your lawyer's going to work on that. Laura, I love you. Please know that, okay? We've got, got a minute left, okay? I love you. I know. I know. Just tell me back. I love you, too. Laura, I can't go to prison for... Yes, you can. You need to know. So what, what did I do? Huh? What did I do? After what did I do? Here, let me get a laptop and show you what the fuck you did. Ugh, I just, I just hate abuse cases with kids. I don't take them, honestly. You know, I'm not a public defender. I can pick and choose my cases. And, uh, and so I just don't take these kind of cases. I don't like wife beaters either. Because generally speaking, wife beaters are just as bad. They, nothing they do is their fault. They're always cheap as hell. Yeah. What did I do? After years of inflicting torment upon the children and the repercussions of her actions catching up to her, Cushman frantically reaches out to her mother. Hi, baby. Hi, Mama. Love you. Love you, too. Um, Mommy, you don't believe I'm this horrible person. They say I am, did you? No, I don't. Yes. Hey, ever. 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 You're not a horrible person. No. Let me disespell mother and uh, Miss Cushman of any kind of notion that you're a decent human being. Just look at the fucking squalor that you made these kids live in and the shit that you did that you recorded, that you probably went back and watched for your own amusement to watch the abuse because you got off on the abuse. Yes, my dear, you're a horrible, rotten, evil fucking person. And I will fight to the death if somebody says you are. Okay. Let's see. If a hug represented how much I loved you, I would hold you in my arms forever. Oh. A Facebook post on the day before sent us interview. <laughs> 
person who reported Cushman finally helped bring the state police to her house, resulting in Cushman's arrest and the children's rescue. In the end, Jamie Cushman was charged with a total of 21 counts of intentional child abuse that did not cause great bodily harm or death. She was given an additional charge for conspiring to commit the abuse and another charge for interfering with an investigation. She eventually pled guilty to five counts of child abuse in exchange for a 15-year prison sentence. Jamie Senna faced the same charges and pled no contest to four counts of child abuse she was sentenced to six years in prison. Finally, Laura Melanson was also charged with five counts of child abuse. She pled guilty on two counts and is expected to face the same six-year sentence as Jamie Senna, though an official sentence has yet to be announced. As for the children, police were able to give Jamie McDaniel this positive update. They're with some really good people, and kids are 18, 14 pounds, and they are all back in school, and they are loving it. Great. So, they're going to be good. But let me tell you something about these children. That PTSD that they have, and get, you, you know that they're going to have PTSD from the abuse. It's going to be with them for the rest of their natural lives. When you have something happen to you that's so significant in your early, and I'm not a psychologist, but I do know a little bit because I've dealt with cases over the years, but you have trauma that happens early on, those are your formative years, and it, it never leaves you. It never it, you you can manage it with therapy and other things, but um, you know they might be doing really well now. But I guarantee you, it comes out sideways. You know, I I've seen situations where, you know, drugs or prostitution or other antisocial behaviors come out, and you can trace it all back to the abuse. And sometimes they wind up being abusers themselves. Hopefully. That's not going to happen here. But it's just awful when you have dealing with child abuse. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good. No, you're good. You're good. Matthew, Alicia, and McDaniel all expressed relief that the children were finally out of Cushman's control. There's no sentence in the world that would justify her action. There's no punishment equal to the amount of damage that she did to those children. If the kids ever saw this, I would want them to know that they were very loved by some people in their lives who really, really wanted to help them and who were really sorry they couldn't. After their extreme suffering, we have to hope the children are getting a chance to recover and make a fresh start and that they will never be hurt this way ever again. Well, Thanks well, again thanks to again Explore to with Us for another, us for another, uh, another great, uh, episode. great episode. 15 years, 15 years destroying, destroying lives, of children. lives of children. You think, think that's enough time? I don't know. I suppose, I don't know. I suppose it's a pretty decent amount of time, 180 months. And then you got 72 months for you know, the other two. I, I don't know what the right sentence would be on this. I just know that you know, 15 years takes her out of rearing any children. And, uh, and hopefully nobody gets it within her wake again. So we'll see you next time here in Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers with our content genius, Michael Rivers. Make sure you subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, on whatever we got, you know, and sign up for Patreon. And Chloe, this is for you. See you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm part of Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please is that my god.